Hello everyone, my name is Roy Jafari and in this video we are going to use decision tree for the task of prediction. Decision tree, as we have discussed, is inherently designed for classification, but it doesn't mean that we can change it a little bit so it can also address prediction tasks. So in this video, we're going to continue working on the same problem. If you remember, we had access to this data of Toyota cars and their prices, and we already did do some somewhat successful prediction with linear regression and MLP, which is an artificial neural network. In this video, we are going to uh, tune a decision tree regressor from uh, one of the uh, Python SKLearn modules. And then also, uh, after we tuned it, we compared the performance of the tuned decision tree with the other methods of prediction we have been discussing so far. So let's get to it. Alright, so these are the parts that we've already seen in the previous video. So if you haven't seen my videos that I did predict, um, you know, for the same data set, Toyota, Toyota Corolla, the prices of the uh, cars based on their attributes, go ahead and watch those videos. Uh, I use linear regression and also use MLP. Alright, so these are the codes that we've already seen. I have already ran these. And these are what we have already seen and discussed. Uh, so we are comparing the tuned MLP with the MLP and also linear regression. And we can see tuned MLP is doing the best performance based on RMSE, MAE, and MAPE. We could say uh, tuned MLP is the best as far as these metrics. But in this video, we're going to now address the same problem using decision tree. So these are the two um, new modules we're going to be using. We're going to be using decision tree regressor and also plot decision tree uh, to be able to look at our decision tree visually. So let's just go ahead and just do one plot of our decision tree and see how it looks like. So we have our uh, you know X train and Y train already separated from one another in the you know, previous codes that I've already ran here. And now we just like we just run, fit the data model to the data, which is the decision tree regressor, and see how it will, how it will look like, right? So that's all we're going to do. All right, so that did take a little bit to run, uh, around 45 seconds. And if you see we have a rather large tree created for us here All right so this is a rather large tree that uh, was created for this data to be able to predict the price pay attention to this uh, parameter of this plot decision tree module um, it says to rotate instead of like you know the tree going like this branches from up to down it's going from left to right so um, that's something you might want to use in, when you are using this function. But anyway, let's go ahead and see how well this decision tree is doing comparing to um, other methods that we have been using. Uh, so we do remember that this is a, uh, just we just ran and we didn't take any time to tune it. So let's just run this and see if it's doing any better than the rest of the methods. By eyeballing it, we could see definitely uh, decision tree joins the rank of linear regression and MLP tuned. But you know, just visually, it might not be for us to be able to really compare these methods. So we go ahead and calculate the metrics, and we see that uh, decision tree is not doing as good as linear regression or MLP tune. It is doing better than the MLP without tuning, but it's not doing as well as the other ones. So now we want to take some time to go ahead and tune decision tree, right? So uh, the best way and easiest way to go about tuning is to use the uh, grid search uh, cross validation, a function of the module sklearn.model selection. These are the different parameters, the different uh, hyperparameters of decision tree regressor and classifier. 
that you can set to reach a best uh, possible uh, prediction model. I did discuss each of these and what they are briefly um, in my video when I discussed uh, decision tree classification. So if you want to hear those introduction, which was very brief, um, I encourage you to watch that video. Otherwise, we can just search them and see what they are. But these are the hyperparameters of decision to regressor. And uh, at the, at the, in the beginning, I have a lot of gaps between the possible uh, numerical uh, parameters. But then once I have a, some idea of uh, you know, what range they are at, I will provide a more detailed possibility for the uh, decision tree for me to tune the decision tree. I do pay attention that uh, I want to uh, do my scoring based on the mean squared error or RMSE. And that this is negative mean squared error because this grid search only maximizes the value. And we do know that for RMSE, we want uh, the minimum possible RMSE. So when you negate it, now you can maximize this value. And that's why it's using negative mean squared error. So we just go ahead and run it and see what, what's going to be the result. All right, so this also lasted around a minute. And now we have some idea. We have the Friedman MSE as a criterion, max depth, mean impurity of 0.001, mean split 20, and the splitter random. So these are the uh, ones that we, you know, so far found here. But now let's go ahead and, you know, have it a little bit more detailed as far as providing the possible options around it. So we have Friedman MSE. So let me change it to this one. And then we have random, still random. Our max depth is 100. So let's put 100 here and, you know, put somewhat closer to this value in case those smaller values are important. And uh, here I would put 99, 98, and 97, right, 96. And the mean split, it was 20. So let's go ahead and put 20, 18, and 16 here, and 22 and 24. And the mean impurity decrease, uh, let's put some values around this possibility so let's make this a little bit smaller by and this and also even a little bit smaller than that uh, here let's make it a little bit larger and even a little bit larger than that all right so these are sort of like closer possibility of uh, you know, tuning this decision tree. So let's go ahead and run this and see what's gonna happen. All right, this one was faster. Now we have our um, decision trees. And we have our best criteria. But one thing you want to pay attention here is that your splitter is random, right? So now that the splitter is set to be random, so every time you run the decision tree, it might be uh, a different uh, performance. And the same way as we did for MLP, we tuned randomness the way we did, we have to do the same thing because we are uh, putting um, that those criteria, we're using those criteria, right? So these are our criteria. So this is our, this one, our splitter is random, our max depth is 96, and our impurity decrease is this one. Let me copy it so I won't make a mistake. And I have 24 here. And Pay attention that I'm also using the random state to sort of like give identity to each of the randomization that 
the uh, algorithm uses for initialization and running itself and uh, I'll have to see for a couple of these randomized options to see uh, how well um, each randomization does for me. So let's go ahead and run this and look at these uh, randomization. Uh, this just ran and now I can look at these values. I'm also sorting them, right? So I can see that the randomized, uh, the random assist 70, 73 leads to the best outcome, right? So here I use the randomized random assist 30, 73 and I use these other criteria that I already copied and now I am set to actually look at the uh, final decision tree for this problem that I took the time to tune. So you can see this decision tree is much more manageable. It's not as big as the uh, one before that we have seen. And you can see, for example, age, quarterly tax, kilometers, horsepower, and those, those attributes have a role in this um, regression or in this uh, prediction. So let's go ahead and look at their performance, see how much it has improved the performance. So once we add this to our heat map, we can definitely see that this is doing better than um, the uh, MLD in untuned, I mean, even visually. But let's go ahead and add that to our table of metrics. And uh, now that we add it to our table of metrics, we do see that the decision tree is not doing as good as MLP tuned for, um, you know, on their RMSE but it's actually doing better in, on the front of MAE and MAPE. So there is some sort of a tie between um, MLP tune and decision tree. All right, so in a short summary, in this video, we basically um, used a decision tree regressor to um, predict prices of Toyota cars in, in, in the data set that we had access to. Uh, so ma to make sure that decision tree is, is reaching its full potential, we actually tuned it uh, before uh, applying it to the state. And we saw that decision tree reached as good of a performance as MLP. And in, in fact, MLP uh, was doing better in one, uh, one metric, but decision tree was doing better in other metrics.